So before I get into what happened, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys um, what happened. The only thing um, that matters to me right now, my, my number one priority is the, um, the well-being of Misty's daughter. Um, if you guys didn't know, uh, Misty had a, Misty has a daughter um, from a previous marriage. Um, her name is Kailani. Uh, she's a, a junior at Clemson University. And uh, she is absolutely my sole priority. She is my mission in life now. Um, and in saying that, um, <clears throat> Misty's good friend, Michelle, uh, they've known each other for a long, long time. Michelle uh, actually introduced um, us. Um, they put together a GoFundMe uh, to help support Kai um, for the rest of her school. And I will put a link in the description below. Um, and I would encourage uh, any and all of you um, that are watching this to just, if all of the 70,000 people out there just donated a dollar, um, that would be huge. Um, I'm not saying you have to, I understand if you don't want to. Um, it has nothing to do with me. I didn't organize it. Not one dollar's coming to me. I, I don't, this is not about anything with that. Um, I want her to be taken care of and it'll also help with some of the, uh, the funeral expenses as well um, that Misty's sister has been taking care of. Um, if you, If you want to support me, um, please just hit the subscribe button and uh, and watch the content. Um, if you want to support me, and um, and that would that would mean a lot. Um, you know that's how you guys can support me. Um, you know, this, this channel, I've, I've, you know, I've never been, I've always been honest with you guys about this. This, this channel is a big part of how I make my living. So if you want to support me, um, just, you know, you can hit the subscribe button and just, just watch it. This, you know, just watch the, the videos. This video will not be monetized, but everything else on there is. So, um, that's how you guys can support me if you want to. Um, so for those of you that don't know, um, Misty passed away on Thursday unexpectedly. Um, so, um, here's what happened. Um, uh, Wednesday I came home and, um. Uh, she complained that her jaw was a little tight. And uh, on Tuesday, we had taken taken Hank, our Husky lab that we had. He had dementia really bad and his hips were going and we had had him put to sleep on Tuesday. Uh, Missy and I went and did that. And um, and I thought maybe that was for maybe her clenching her jaw because that was a pretty emotional ordeal for both of us. And um, so um, Thursday she woke up and she, uh, we both woke up around 6.30 or so and she said, my, my throat is tight. And I didn't think anything of it. Um, it allergies or something and but she had all her energy as she usually does. She seemed fine. She was talking to me. She was packing up to go out of town um, for about two weeks for go to Atlanta for work and then to go see her sister and her dad in Mobile for a few days over the weekend <clears throat> and then come back through Atlanta for work. 
and then come home. So I was here at the house actually, which was rare for me. And um, she packed up all her stuff. She had a ton of luggage. And I was on the couch. She brought everything down. I, I offered to help her pack up the car and she said, no, no, I got it. And she packed up the car and uh, I gave her a hug and I kissed her. I said goodbye and I, uh, I told her that I loved her and I told her to be careful. And uh, about 30 minutes later, she called me and uh, I was on my way over to my parents' farm for a meeting and she called me and she said uh, that she was having chest pains and that she had kind of broken out in a sweat. And she had called my sister, who's a nurse, and uh, she said, Mackenzie thinks I'm having a, a heart attack. And I was like, no way. And uh, so I said, well, what are you, gonna, you know, what, what are you doing? And she said, well, Mackenzie wanted to call the ambulance, but I'm gonna turn around and go back into town and Mackenzie is sending me to an urgent care. And I said, okay. And Misty had had some panic attacks the year before, like one or two. And uh, <clears throat> I thought maybe she was having a panic attack. And so uh, I said, do you want me to stay on the phone with you? And she said, yeah. I said, okay. And I was, was in my truck heading to the farm. And uh, we were talking over the phone she was fine i was trying not to talk to her too much because she was trying to get to the urgent care and um i didn't know it but uh after about 15 minutes we were talking and, and I, I guess she had she had made it to the urgent care and i didn't know it but all of a sudden her breathing just became really rapid and and labored over the phone uh, we were over the phone. We weren't FaceTiming, and it just became really, really rapid and labored. And then she said, uh, I don't think I'm going to make it. And uh, and then she wouldn't say anything else. I, I was trying to get her to talk to me, and she wouldn't say anything. And so after about a, maybe a minute of that, I hung up the phone, and I called 911, and I had her on. We had each other on Life360, which is an app on your phone. It tells you where um, your family members are you, if you share that. And I could see that she was in the parking lot of the urgent care in downtown Conway. So I sent EMS there, and I was about seven minutes away from where I was on the way to my parents. And I turned around, and I got there in about six or seven minutes. And when I got there, um, I pulled up and I saw the car in the parking lot and I ran up and uh, she just looked like she was asleep in the front seat. And uh, the EMTs I think thought she was asleep too or passed out. And they were, I guess the, the doors were locked and they were at the window trying to get her to wake up to open the door <clears throat> and I just ran over there and I just I just started screaming at him to break the glass just break break the and I ran up to the window and just just started hitting it with my fist as hard as I could I th you know two or three times and just screaming at him and uh, I couldn't break it I thought it was gonna break my hand and they, they told me to get back and I one of the guys brought an axe over and he busted the window out and they pulled her out. And when they pulled her out, I knew. And they uh, they tried to revive her right there. And uh, I was incoherent, just utterly incoherent. I don't think I, I said five words. <clears throat> and uh, they loaded her up into the uh, into the ambulance and they took her to the hospital. And uh, when I got there, they, they pulled me into a room and uh, 
about 10 minutes later, the doctor came in and he told me what I already knew and she was gone. And uh, I got, they, they brought me into a room and uh, I got to see her for a few minutes. She still had a tube in her throat and uh, they told me that uh, the coroner was going to release the body and then about two hours later he called me and said they changed their mind um, and I don't know if that had something to do with her doctor she had she had been my sister had referred her to a doctor about six or eight months prior um, she was 46 and uh, she had been trying to lose some weight and she was exercising constantly and dieting really on top of her diet and she wasn't losing any weight and uh, she had some hyperthyroidism and a few other things uh, pre premenopausal things that were keeping her from losing weight nothing major and he had helped her lose about 20 pounds or so over about a six or eight month period and he had just seen her uh, the Friday before and she was in perfect health her blood pressure was perfect everything and he works at that hospital and he came down and talked to me and he, he just said I just saw her I don't I don't know what happened I don't I don't get this I don't understand and so the coroner called me about two hours later and said they changed their mind that they, they were going to do an autopsy. And um, <clears throat> they did the autopsy and they could not find anything during the physical examination that would indicate why this happened. Um, so we don't, we don't know for sure we're just kind of going off the symptoms that she was reporting. We've got to wait about five or six months before the the labs get back uh, to all the testing. So we, we won't know for sure for a while. And I don't even know if that will reveal anything or not. But um, <clears throat> Misty's wishes to me, my, to me and... Uh, and to her family was that she had always wanted to be cremated. And um, so we had a local funeral home here take her and um, her family, her immediate family came in, her sister, her mom, her dad, uh, her ex-husband and his wife and uh, my family. And we had a funeral home uh, prepare her um, in a small group of us got to go myself her sister her daughter her, her mom and her dad and her ex-husband um, we got to go and and see her one last time and, uh, and say goodbye and um, <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to go pick up her ashes uh, this afternoon and um, the only way uh, for her to get back to her family was for the funeral home was to ship the ashes USPS and I was like I'm not doing that so tomorrow I'm going to get up and, and take her uh, to Mobile to her sister and deliver and deliver her to her family that's where I'm at right now and um, they uh, they say that grief comes in, uh, in in waves and uh, that's a true statement uh, but my my pain is constant and sharp. And uh, I've expressed this to my family um, and they know this. I, uh, I know where she is. 
She was raised Catholic. She told me she prayed for me every day. I know where she is. And uh, when it happened, every fiber of my being wanted to die to be with her. And it feels like something's just been ripped out of me. It's just, it's just gone. And uh, I don't, I don't know how to put it back. I don't know how to fix it. It's just gone. And I think there's, there's still a part of me that uh, that doesn't want to be here. That, that wants to be gone. And and Kai. Kai is the only thing that's, she's, she's why I'm still here. Cause if I were to do that and leave, and leave Kai, she, I don't think she'd ever forgive me. And I, I, I promised her when I saw her that I would honor her. And uh, that I would, I promised her that I would take care of Kai. And uh, I, uh, I went to the VA yesterday to see a therapist. And I've got to go back again today. And they know I told them everything. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. So the, the channel is... Uh, it's not going anywhere. I, uh, I've got a video of the last project that I did before Misty passed. Uh, it's pretty much done. I'll, uh, I'll get that out to you guys probably later this week. It's got a, uh, a really nice little tribute um, to Hank at the beginning of it that I had already put in there after we put him to sleep. I, I showed that to Misty before she left and she she really liked it. Um, please don't blow up my Instagram uh, with messages. If, if you wanna leave a comment, just do it in the comment section below. I, I'll read them all. And uh, I, uh, I appreciate all the support from, uh, from everybody. Had a lot of people reach out to me. Um, several of the YouTubers that I know reached out. And they may share this as well. And I, I told them that they could. And uh, um, so, yeah, um, I'll be back to work. I hope beginning of next week, I've, I've got, uh, you know, I've still got things to do and um, Misty would not want me laying around this house <laughs> and moping. She, uh, she always told me how proud she was of me. And, uh, so um, I just want to thank you guys. I know uh, she wasn't in a, a lot of a lot of my videos, um, but uh, she she was the heart and soul of this channel. Um, she she was all of the things that you never saw um, to make this channel go. She made sure the dogs were taken care of. She made sure when I got home that I had I had dinner to eat and my clothes were clean and the house was taken care of and you know the bills got paid on time and all of those things just so I could concentrate on on work and and making content for the channel and she she did everything behind the scenes and this this would not be here without her so. Um, but I'm going to do everything I can to keep it going. I don't know if I'm going to be myself 
for a while. I, uh, I, I may not be. the same person that I was for a while but uh, I want this to continue so uh, I'm going to do my best to make sure that happens for you guys and for her so, I appreciate I appreciate all you guys out there. Thank you. And um, I'll try to have that other video up later this week. And uh, I've got another project to do on Tuesday of this of this coming week. So I'll get some footage of that. And uh, we'll go from there. And we'll just take it day by day. And uh, just hopefully we get through it. But thank you guys, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you.